Okay, I think we are ready to start. So, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, um, everyone on site here in the Vienna International Center, but also online, thank you for joining for the Kibo Cube Expanding Possibilities for Space Emerging Countries side event. And yeah, we are really happy to have all of you here. So, um, the agenda for today looks like this. We will have opening remarks, but also presentations from our awardees as well. And of course, we have our partner JAXA that will explain about um, the Kibo Cube concept as well. So with this, I'd like to just move on and uh, invite our acting director, Mr. Nicholas Hedman, for the opening remarks. Your Excellency, Ambassador Hikihara, uh, distinguished participants, dear colleagues, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this side event uh, focusing on the Kibo Cube program and its expanding possibilities for emerging space nations. I'm pleased to be hosting this event alongside our esteemed partner, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, with the support of the Permanent Mission of Japan. In the spirit of our evolving work under the Access to Space for All initiative, it is a privilege to be sharing this platform with our colleagues here at the United Nations in Vienna, as we, as well as globally through the online network. It seems like yesterday, but the Kibo Q program was conceived already in 2015. Since then, many exciting developments have emerged and the program has become one of the cornerstones in enhancing access to space for everyone. Together with JAXA, we address the capabilities gaps in accessing space by providing opportunities for teams from developing economies and economies in transition to develop their own CubeSat. Once the design phase is done, we have then them deployed from the Japanese Kibo module of the International Space Station. Thanks to the generous support of JAXA, the teams can fully focus on their CubeSat development, testing and operations in orbit as the cost of deployment and launching is covered. Over the years, UNUSA and JAXA have also provided the teams with technical and administrative support reinforcing existing research and educational institutions. And the impact goes far beyond that. These projects stimulate opportunities for emerging nations to conceive or review their national space law and policy frameworks, and if necessary, adjust them in a manner consistent with international law. A solid legal foundation in the end is the precondition for a thriving space sector in any country. Fulfilling responsibilities internationally is also a critical step to become a true spacefaring nation. What are the success stories we can report so far in the eight years of the partnership? The summary is quite impressive, underscoring how much we can achieve in cooperation with solidarity and ambition at heart. Until today, eight teams have been selected for this program. Five of them already successfully deployed the CubeSat into orbit. The team from Kenya in 2018 was the first one, followed by Guatemala in 2020, Mauritius in 2021, Moldova in 2022, and in Indonesia earlier this year in January. For many, the satellites deployed through Kibo Cube were the first ones in the history of the respective countries, and we are honored to have contributed to these outstanding achievements. And as we speak, three more teams are in the process of development of their CubeSats. We look forward to seeing them launched and deployed in the coming years. The three teams represent Central American Integration System, SICA, which is an international team with members from Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Honduras. And round six, awardees from Mexico and Tunisia. With this in mind, 
I assure you, we are far from done. Let me underline that we've agreed with our great partners from JAXA on the extension of our memorandum of understanding until 2030. This step will allow us to open a few more rounds and welcome more teams to take part in KiboCube. So far, it is not already good news. So far, if this is not already good news enough, in line with our newly updated MOU, I'm thrilled to announce that we are opening a new round of KiboCube today. This round will allow a maximum of two teams to join the program and gain the experience and opportunity to have their CubeSat deployed from the ISS. The details of the documents and application will be highlighted by my colleague Hasuki later in this event. Before I close, let me take this opportunity to thank once again the government of Japan and JAXA for their continuous collaboration and a strong commitment to capacity building. For years, we have successfully worked together to bridge the gap in accessing space, and the office looks forward to bringing these efforts from strength to strength through our new MOU. Thank you for your attention, and I wish all of you a productive event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicholas, for the opening remarks. And now I'd like to invite to the floor His Excellency, Mr. Hikihara Takeshi, who is the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Permanent Mission of Japan to the International Organizations in Vienna. Thank you. Acting Director, uh, Mr. Nicholas Hedman, dear uh, colleagues and friends, um, I'm honored to be here with you uh, here today for this a uh, very important side event during the 66th session of the uh, COPIOS. I thank first the, the Office of the Office for Outer, uh, Outer Space Affairs, UNUSA, and JAXA for the excellent preparation of this event. And I also would like to express my sincere gratitude to the UNUSA for its continued engagement uh, to space capacity building programs. It is fair to say that our society benefits more and more from space systems and space-derived space data, not only in our, our daily life, but also in critical situations such as severe natural disasters. The importance of space applications has become widely recognized, as clearly demonstrated by the growing number of copious member states now having reached uh, 102. In particular, space technologies plays a critical role in addressing urgent global challenges and in achieving the sustainable development goals. For example, satellite data can help address climate change, natural and man-made disaster response, and food security. You may have seen, uh, perhaps, um, coming to, to this room, uh, the, the nice photo exhibition of the, uh, uh, on the, the ground floor of this building. Uh, these photos clearly indicate uh, the, the wide spectra, spectrum of fields or issues that uh, the space activities uh, can, can benefit too. Undoubtedly, access to the advantages of space technology should greatly benefit all countries, but especially developing countries. For this reason, Japan has been working with UNUSA on a joint program known as Kibo Cube, aimed at helping aimed at help developing countries to build up their own space capacities. And now it is in its eighth year, Kibo Cube has become one of the Japan's uh, true flagship programs in the space field. It provides educational and research institutions of developing countries with the opportunity to launch their own CubeSats into space from the Japanese experiment uh, model Kibo or on module Kibo on the International Space Station. As Mr. Hedman mentioned, up to now, the eight teams from around the world have been selected to participate, uh, namely Kenya, Guatemala, Mauritius, Indonesia, and Moldova. These five teams have already successfully developed and launched their own CubeSats. 
each of these CubeSats is the country's, uh, each country's first satellite, uh, except for Indonesia. And we hope that the recent winning teams, the Central American Integration System, Mexico, and Tunisia will make a steady progress in developing and deploying their CubeSats in the coming years. Through the actual development and operation of CubeSats, we expect that each participating country will gain indispensable knowledge and valuable experience on space engineering. We hope also that the experience gained from the CubeSat program will eventually contribute to the establishment of national space program and legal frameworks in each country. During today's event, I look forward to hearing from the Guatemalan, Mauritian, and Mexican teams about their experiences and their expectations for the future. Today, I have the pleasure to inform you that uh, we have decided to extend the Kibo Cube program until 2030, and that the next round of opportunities for selection has just started. With this extension, I'm convinced that JAXA's collaboration with UNUSA will continue to raise awareness of space among developing countries and to bring them tangible benefits. So, dear uh, colleagues and friends, uh, this inspiring event today highlights the importance of international cooperation, ownership, and inclusiveness. I hope all of you enjoy the discussion uh, to be followed by a networking lunch outside this conference room. And let me conclude by myself, uh, by my sincere gratitude to uh, UNUSA and all the participants today uh, for the sake of the, the benefit from the space. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for the remarks. And next, I'd like to move on and give the floor to our colleagues at Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. So I'd like to invite to the floor Mr. Kosaka Akira, who will be giving us an overview of KiboCube. Thank you very much, Hazuki-san, and good afternoon, everyone, uh, in this fall. And uh, good morning for the people joining from our uh, American side, and uh, good evening from the uh, Asian side. So my name is Akira Kosaka, uh, director of JAXA International Relations Department. First, uh, I would like to thank all of the delegates from UN Corpus member countries uh, who are participating in this workshop despite uh, your lunch break. Also, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency, uh, Mr. Takeshi Hikihara, Ambassador of Permanent Mission of Japan to the international organizations in Vienna. And also UN Acting Director, Mr. Uh, Nicholas Hedman, for your kind remarks for today's workshop. As many players are emerging in the field of space, ensuring access to space and bringing benefits of space technology for all countries are important to pursue the sustainable space activities. JAXA and UN USA's cooperative program called Kibo Cube is one of the effective frameworks for securing access to space for space emerging countries. We would like to thank UN USA for cooperating with JAXA for Kibo Cube program. This program offers developed countries the opportunity to deploy, uh, to deploy CubeSat from the Japanese experiment module Kibo of the ISS. We JAXA are happy to be able to offer these opportunities uh, which co contribute to the capacity building of space emerging countries by using our Kibo module. So uh, that's right, uh, this is the uh, International Spa Space Station. And since the space station is flying in the, this direction, from the back to this forward, our Japanese uh, experiment module Kibo is located in front of the flight direction. So uh, the part shown in red square is our Kibo. We launched 
these three elements in 2008 and 2009 by US space shuttles. So we have been operating our modules for nearly 15 years. In the Kibo's pressurized module, astronaut ran various scientific experiments and at the external platform, various experiments are conducted to observe the Earth or observe the whole universe. We have an airlock to connect the pressurized module and the external platform. Also, we have a robotic arm which can grab the hardware which come out of the airlock. By utilizing this air robot arm, we deploy satellites. These are very unique functions which our Kibo has. Kibo Cube is a program uh, based on the United States and Japan collaboration on one U size CubeSat deployment from the International Space Station, Kibo. Below is a description written in the UNUSA website. Kibo Cube enables access to space, promoting the sustainability of future space activities. Kibo Cube works like this. You design and develop a satellite, test it, and go through safety reviews. After that, you bring it to JAXA, then JAXA will check if the interface is OK or not. If it is OK, JAXA will take care of the launch of your satellite to the ISS. Astronaut on board will set the satellite in the airlock and bring it out of the station. Then the robotic arm will grab the holder and the satellite will be deployed using our satellite orbital deployer called JSOT. Actually, developing a satellite is not easy. I think many of you here know about this. So we also have technical supports, and I will explain about this later. We started Kibo Cube in 2016 and have selected eight teams since then. Five of them are already deployed, and three more is currently in the developing phase. So this map shows the countries whose CubeSat was deployed using JAXA's uh, deployer, JSOT. Uh, this covers not, not only the Kibo Cube uh, sat, uh, satellite, but also the uh, CubeSat uh, deployed under the another framework. Actually, JAXA was the first to deploy CubeSat from the ISS. The first deployment was in uh, 2012. And since then, 72 CubeSats from 31 countries were deployed using JSOT. I'd like to uh, mention about the advantage of Kibo Cube. First, that uh, it is free of charge. Second, you can get technical support from expert UNICEF is a university space engineering consortium, which consists of university professors in the field of space engineering. Number three, we have three to four launch opportunities per year. This means even if you miss a certain flight opportunity, but you can catch the next flight opportunity, which is, which is a few months later. Number four, uh, this is the most uh, important aspect. The vibration during the launch is much lower comparing to rocket rides because the satellite will be launched in a softback. Number five, we can broadcast the deployment event by YouTube. 
for these few years due to the pandemic, the team could not come to Japan to see, to witness the deployment from the Mission Control Center at JAXA Tsukuba Center. But uh, we could share the excitement, excitement through the broadcast. In support of Kibo Cube, JAX has developed a series of free lectures in English by experts of space engineering in collaboration with UNICEF. I recognize the face of Ms. Rei Kawashima-san. Uh, she is the UNICEF Secretary General. In, <laughs> so uh, uh, would you please contact her so, uh, to talk about the future possibility. So uh, we have 21 lectures posted on the UN website. These are really useful lectures. The professors explain how we sh you should design your satellite, project management of satellite development, and technical lectures such as thermal control system, altitude control systems, and so on. You can ask questions to the professors when they have a live session, so please make use of these opportunities. So this slide shows uh, JAXA Kibo Cube team members. The lady in the middle is uh, uh, Miss Izumi Yoshizaki-san. Uh, she is a very bright woman with a beautiful smile. So uh, if uh, Izumi-san, our team members are online, please say some words. <laughs> Someone oh. Ah, no, so sorry. <laughs> and uh, in this room, uh, uh, Mr. Miyoshi-san, uh, who is the back of this room, uh, he is in charge of international coordination. Uh, so uh, uh, as mentioned by His Excellency, Mr. Hikihara-san and uh, Mr. Hedman-san, JAXA and UN USA have extended the Kibo Cube program until 2030, and eighth round has been just opened. The documents are available on the UN USA's webpage, and Ms. Hazuki Mori-san, UN USA, is going to provide you with more detailed information, including how to apply in her upcoming presentation today. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to many applications. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kosaka, for the introduction to KiboCube. Um, up until now, we were uh, talking more about KiboCube from the supporting side, but now we'd like to move on to the next part of the session, which is talking about the countries who have benefited from KiboCube. So with this, I'd like to invite to the floor um, Mr. Alberto Ignacio Glender Rivas, um, who is from the Permanent Mission of Mexico here in Vienna. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Mori. Thank you. His uh, Excellency, I'm really glad to join this occasion to celebrate what is obviously a very successful program, Kivo Cube, and it's very touching. It's a very human uh, way of approaching space and its peaceful use. It's about access to space, it's about human resources and make it happen for those young professionals that they have the ambition, that they have the curiosity, the will, and my God, what a great uh, experience in life is to see uh, this happening to Kivo Q uh, project. Uh, thank you for the good explanation on the technicalities of the program, Mr. Kosaka. And is good health and is even expanding. Mm. So uh, thanks to the generosity of, of, of JAXA and the government of Japan. Mexico is a telluric country. It shakes uh, with something that we shake. Uh, uh, and now we are going to a special time in, in, in our geology in Mexico, but it's something that we share with Japan, uh, volcanoes. And that's what the Mexican project is about with uh, Kibo Cube and the nanosalite Shiba. Um, <clears throat> also, Mexico has a very complex geography to, oh, 
Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, to the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. That's why we built a lot of importance also for the observation from space uh, to uh, understand better uh, water cycles, uh, climate change, and monitoring biodiversity, especially marine biodiversity. And that's, uh, those areas are, uh, we are uh, expanding and planning even more cooperation with Japan, uh, which has been um, very supportive. And we have a very good, a strong collaborations uh, with JAXA as well as with NASA uh, with the development of a constellation of uh, nanosatellites that what we call Aztec Sat. Uh, we hope to strengthen that cooperation. We hope to do more with Japan. And, and, and this is a, a token of uh, uh, the good uh, cooperation uh, projects that are happening and that we leave an imprint even in the generations to come to develop a closer network of professionals, a, a closer understanding of the purpose of what Japan is doing, uh, outreaching to space and Mexico uh, being in the same uh, tune. And this is not on, the only forum where we are together, uh, but, uh, but it's, it's a concrete uh, and, and very moving example of what, what is uh, uh, happening. So my congratulations and my gratitude to Japan, to JAXA, uh, to your technical team that make it happen. And to the ambassador, uh, on behalf of uh, government of Mexico and the Mexican Space Agency, uh, allow me to join in congratulating this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, for the very kind remarks. And it is a perfect introduction because the next speaker is our awardee from Mexico. So with this, I'd like to invite to the floor Mr. Eugenio Urbita Abiso from the Universidad Popular Autónoma de Estado de Puebla. And yeah, I see him. He is connected. So um, if you can share your screen and yeah, start the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your invitation to this event organi organized by the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and Jap Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, as, um, as Mr. Alberto Glender said, Mexico has a lot of active volcanoes. That's why we have at UPAEP a program called Monitoring and Exploring Mexican Active Volcanoes. And in, in and Shiba One, uh, the CubeSat, is a very important part of that program. Uh, we knew about uh, the, uh, your call, the Cube, Cube call, uh, because one of our student, uh, students uh, from the Aerospace Engineering Program sent us the information, and I immediately called for a meeting to apply for the sixth round of Cube Cube. Professors and, and students, we found this huge opportunity for all to design, build, and develop a CubeSat to be deployed from the International Space Station. Uh, in Mexico, as in other countries of the world, there are some active volcanoes. Many of them present a danger to the populations living nearby, or even the possibility of disaster for people and the environment. Uh, Mexico has at least 12 active volcanoes. You can see in the map of Mexico, where are they where they are located now you can see some uh, beautiful pictures of uh, uh, some of them but i'm going to talk a little bit more about our volcano popocatepetl popocatepetl is in the nahuatl language i i mean the aztec language and the meaning of the word is smoking mountain this is the name of the volcano since many centuries ago. And this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, picture uh, of the volcano. And you can see also a church, a church that it is in the top of a pyramid located in Cholula, Puebla, very, very close to Puebla city where Upaet is, is, is settled. This is a um, picture from our volcano we took these pictures uh, some years ago from the uh, from a high altitude balloon 
and this also was ta taken son a month ago a month ago uh, from a high altitude balloon and this was taken uh, 15 days ago now you can see that uh, our volcano Popocatépetl is erupting uh, it was erupting during a few days you can see these uh, also beautiful pictures again but as you can see a lot of problems to the population um, we have two photographs from puebla city and another one from atlisco city you can see the ashes and uh, people uh, uh, has to to have um, a mask in order to protect them from the ashes and also as you know the, the ashes are very very um, it's, a, it's a huge problem because uh, ashes and water uh, cause a kind of cement. This is the the airport in Puebla City. So that's why we have to. We are working in, in this program since many years ago. We have to monitor and explore the Mexican active volcanoes. We are going to do it from the from the, the high altitude balloon, from the from drones and. A very important part of this program is the, Q, the Shiva One CubeSat. We also will have a seismic sensors, gas sens sensors, etc. Our mission is to develop a one U CubeSat named Shiva One to observe the active volcanoes in Mexico and analyze the dispersion of us to alert the population in the vicinity of the volcano. This is uh, the schematics of our uh, satellite. This is the actual diagrams of our satellite. You can see the camera, the batteries, uh, the antennas, etc. And the mission concept is a very, very easy concept, but very important. We have to 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 test the, the satellite to launch it. You, you're going to launch it. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, after being in the ISS, uh, it will be deployed and uh, after some minutes, the antenna will deploy it and we will, we will start sending a beacon every minute. Then we have to take the, the photos, send them, send them to, the, to the ground stations, but send them also to a, a constellation. In this case, it's not going to be global star, but Iridium. And then we will have the information in the, um, our labs in order to analyze the data and to uh, and to prevent and uh, be able to prevent to the, popula the population. You can see this is the mission concept. We have to 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 take the vectors of the ashes in order to alert the population. So this is a, a first step, but extremely important for the future in monitoring active volcanoes in Mexico. Even a federal institution, Senapred is interested in the results and data that Shiva One will provide. UPAEP Aerospace undergraduate program has almost 100 students. Many of them are involved in one way or another in Shiva One project. Their participation in these challenges is a significant part of their education. Several universities in Mexico are following our work and I am sure more universities will launch their own satellites, satellites in the future. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eugenio, for the overview of your project. And we're very happy to see that development is going uh, very smoothly as well. So we really look forward to the launch and the deployment of the CubeSat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to move on to our third round awardee, um, who is the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council. I'd like to invite to the floor Mr. Vic from Bissana. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, everybody for um, having us and inviting us uh, to this uh, prestigious uh, meeting. Uh, as um, you can see, can, can you see my screen, Hazuki? Is it okay? Yes, we see it perfectly. Good. Um, so my name is uh, Vikram Bissonat. I'm from the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council. For those of you who do not know Mauritius, we are a very small island of 2,000 square kilometers in uh, the middle of the Indian Ocean 
here uh, in, in Africa, uh, close to the west coast of uh, Madagascar. And uh, we have a population of around 1.3 million um, people. And uh, we have a large uh, exclusive economic zone of around 2.4 million square kilometers. Uh, I am from the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council. We uh, are an apex body advisor to government in all matters pertaining to science, research, technology, and innovation. So I was uh, saying that we are a very small island in the Indian Ocean and uh, uh, I'm, I work with uh, the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council. We are an apex body advisor to government in all matters pertaining to science, research, technology and innovation. And um, we have very good uh, uh, relationships with uh, um, organizations from uh, international organizations as well as local organizations. Um, so in 2017, we got uh, uh, a, a call uh, from our uh, permanent mission in in uh, uh, in Geneva, asking us to consider sending a, a CubeSat and participating in the Kibo Cube program. So uh, we didn't have much expertise uh, in in that, and uh, we dared to uh, have a go at it. And uh, we uh, look for collaboration and. Uh, we wrote all over the place, uh, all over the world with uh, for different organizations. And uh, uh, one organization from uh, uh, um, from UK, which is Clyde Space, AAC Clyde Space, um, kindly accepted to help us. And with their help, we were able to uh, write the, the full concept. Fortunately, we had on board two aerospace uh, engineers, which uh, worked in close collaboration with uh, the uh, engineers of Clyde Space. And in 2018, we were awarded the uh, Kibo Cube uh, program. So uh, we built a, a small, the, the CubeSat, which is called the Mauritius Imagery Radio Communication Satellite One, Mia Sat One. And the main objective of the MIASAT-1 was to take uh, pictures of uh, the region around Mauritius. We also had a digipeter to test uh, two-way communication. So MIASAT-1 was uh, deployed in June 2021 and phased out in April 2022 after orbiting 10 months in space. You would imagine uh, from 2018 to 2020, 21, we had a hard time, especially with uh, the COVID um, uh, pandemic. We had to work even through uh, two uh, pandemics. So we had uh, several uh, online sessions. So I would like to take this opportunity here to thank our colleagues from JAXA, from UNUSA, uh, who, who uh, really facilitated the, the collaboration and, and uh, really helped us with all their safety reviews together with our colleagues from uh, AAC Clyde Space to put everything on, on track despite uh, the difficult situation of COVID. And uh, thanks to all these persons in uh, June 2021, we finally uh, launched, uh, we finally deployed our CUBE uh, satellite in space. So, um, and uh, from there on, uh, we were able to track the satellite. So thanks to the collaboration of AAC Clyde Space, we were able to set a uh, state-of-the-art ground station, which is a, a mini replica of the ground station of AAC Clyde Space in UK. Uh, and we had also a, a small module, which is the FlatSat, which was a uh, replica of the MIASAT one. So we, what we did, we uh, tried all our simulations on the FlatSat, tested it before sending to MIASAT one. So our engineers, so this is uh, the antenna we have uh, placed on top of our building here, which uh, thanks to which we were able to track the satellite and uh, uh, send commands. So here are some uh, views of some pictures of the, which Mia Satman took. You can see on the picture on the left, the west coast of Madagascar, 
Uh, on the right, you could see uh, Mauritius was under the, the uh, clouds. Uh, you'll see uh, on bottom part of uh, the, the picture, we would see Mauritius would be around here. And uh, the small piece of land on top was uh, Rainian Island. The other, some other pictures uh, taking, you see the horizon and space. Uh, so this was a really groundbreaking uh, opportunity for, for Mauritius because thanks to this opportunity, uh, Mauritius were, had, uh, was a, became a spacefaring country for the first time in history. So for the first time, it, we sent our a, a, a satellite in space. Now, this was not an easy task, as you would say. We had to uh, uh, sort of apprise government on the importance of satellite and space technology, as well as an emerging uh, new potential for socioeconomic pillar for the country. So um, we had several uh, discussions with uh, with government high levels. They, there was a high level uh, committee chaired by the Honorable Minister of Technology who sort of guided us all through the way. And he was also ensuring that we progressed well and was the connection between the MRIC and the central government so that everything was facilitated. And um, the prime minister of uh, Mauritius uh, was uh, present during the deployment. And he was the one who gave the OK there. So uh, this uh, um, uh, pro program uh, uh, gave us the not only the opportunity of sending a space uh, a, an, um, an object into space, but also uh, made us realize as a country, as a government, how important space uh, could be as a future socioeconomic pillar. Um, so for us to be able to ensure our future, we now had uh, to embark into uh, a capacity building program. So we, uh, the MRIC led uh, uh, together with a collaborator, which is a radio amateur, we built a capacity building program whereby we taught students how to, to use uh, a locally available material to build a uh, low earth orbiting receiving antenna. And uh, thanks to this, the students were able to capture images from the NOAA satellite. So these students were from the secondary schools. So we trained around 100 um, students from secondary schools, aged around uh, 13 to 18. And, uh, they, and we gifted, after the training, we gifted uh, 12 schools with the antenna. And in, in view of sort of propagating this uh, uh, technology. So um, this was a uh, once the the satellite burned, uh, we uh, start we we during the the pathway we realized how important space and satellite technology was, and uh, thanks to this uh, leveraging on. Uh, different government facilitated bi bilateral re relationship with friendly countries. We engage into collaborative avenues with different countries. In uh, that sense, we signed an MOU with the Indian Space Research Organization, uh, through which we are currently tracking one of their satellites using our ground station. We had a framework agreement with the Mohammed bin Rashid uh, Space Center in the UAE where uh, there were two uh, main uh, opportunities. One is for, again, building uh, awareness, raising awareness for our students. We had a live talk with the Emirati astronaut, which we, I will show you some pictures. And last but not least, we have a collaborative agreement with the Surrey Space Center, whereby we are uh, collaborating in a research project. So uh, as I told you, uh, we had a live talk with the uh, Emirati astronaut on the 11th of uh, May, 2023. 
this was uh, and whereby uh, high level officials in Mauritius uh, together with some 300 uh, students uh, in Mauritius in 80 students in Rodrigues Island. Rodrigues Island is a small island for Mauritius and 20 students in Agalega. Just to give you an idea, Mauritius is down there uh, uh, on, on your la, down the screen here. Rodrigues is just on the right and Agalega is a little further up in the Indian Ocean. So the interesting thing is that altogether some 400 students at the same time in different locations were able to talk to uh, uh, Sultan, uh, the Emirati astronaut. So this program again, we uh, worked in, in full collaboration with government and these are the organizations which I mentioned, uh, to, which uh, supported us. Um, so um, now after the, the MIRSAT-1 project, it really gave us uh, this overview of how space can help Mauritius as a small island developing state to consolidate uh, the management, for example, of its large exclusive economic zone. So we are now looking towards uh, uh, creating a space agency in Mauritius. I know that the, the order is very tall, but we are uh, very uh, confident in that and we are working in four sort of, uh, of uh, pillars. One is to continue building capacity for, for our students, uh, creating space curriculum involving more and more students. Second, continuing on the international collaboration whereby we could leverage and, and leapfrog on uh, technologies from friend countries to push forward our agenda. Fourth, continue to do research and development. As I told you, we, we are uh, collaborating with the uh, Surrey Space Center and uh, a project funded by the UNDP Ocean Innovation Challenge, where we are uh, sort of merging different space technologies using AI to track uh, illegal uh, fishing boats in our EEZ. And um, last but not least, to give opportunity to uh, space uh, to to give opportunity to space startups. Government has different um, uh, incentives to in encourage uh, startups to, to come to Mauritius. So these are the, the, the four areas. So this is uh, our, our team. And I think I'll, I'll stop here, uh, Hazuki. Um, thank you very much for all uh, distinguished uh, uh, people there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vikram, for the <laughs> thank you very much for the overview. It's always amazing to see what the Mirsat one has accomplished, but all the capacity building activities that are following up. So thank you very much. And Thank next, you. I'd like to invite to the floor our Kibo Cube second round awardee, um, Mr. Victor Hugo Adjerdi Bardale, who is the uh, team leader of the Universidad de Valle de Guatemala. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Victor Ayerdi, and uh, the head of mechanical engineering department at the Universidad de Valle de Guatemala. And today, I will tell you about the uh, uh, CubeSat Quetzal one, what is uh, the legacy of the first Guatemalan satellite, which is uh, a very nice story. Uh, the Quetzal One project started in 2014 and was selected as the winner of the second round of the KiboCube program in 2017. It was deployed from the ISS in 2020 uh, thanks to this program and its mission was to design, develop and operate a CubeSat satellite, testing a prototype of a multispectral sensor for uh, environmental monitoring, especially, specifically uh, we wanted to, to or, or we want to develop a sensor to monitor chlorophyll in, in what is a wire. The objectives of the program was uh, to introduce aerospace field in Guatemala. We don't have uh, engineering aerospace field degrees in Guatemala and before Quetzal One, we haven't had a, a space mission. Uh, we wanted to develop capacities to provide the students an opportunity to work in a real space project 
and more important to motivate more children and youth in Guatemala to study science and engineering. The project was uh, related with uh, several SDGs to help to promote gender equality, uh, also to promote industry innovation infrastructure in a new uh, sector in Guatemala. And this project was possible due to a lot of partnerships uh, that uh, with other organizations uh, all around the world, as UNUSA and JAXA. Some achievements of the project uh, it was uh, uh, besides recognized as the second round winner of the QVQ program, also uh, the team was recognized as person of the year in Guatemala 2019 by the newspaper. It was recognized with the People's Choice Award for the uh, American uh, Aeronautics and Astronautics Association in 2020. And it was the winner of the QSA Delivery Initiative Prize of uh, Arizona State University in 2022. Also, it was no, nominated for the small satellite mission of the year in 2020. So uh, this is important for us because uh, it was our first project and, and was uh, uh, has got a, a lot of achievements so far. From the point of uh, view of technical results, uh, the project, uh, the CubeSat, uh, we received almost 85,000 data packages from sent from the CubeSat on Earth. It operated during 2011 days in 2020. Uh, we developed six of the eight models of the satellite. Uh, that was a very hard work uh, since it is not common that for your first satellite you work that, but we needed to do it and we learned a lot. And the first images received on air taken by the uh, Central America satellite were, were sent by the Quetzal one in November 17, basically. We, we had the Huracan Yota hitting Central America at that time, and we get those images. But uh, more than the technical aspect, I think the real impact of, uh, of the salad is uh, related with a lot of other things. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the objectives was to develop capacities, and we had the opportunity to work on, with more than 800 people. Uh, most of them are students with an average of eight of 21 years old, all of them undergraduate students. Uh, with all the material we have of the project, uh, we have now, we are in the possibility to include in 13 courses of engineering, real examples and material that we use for the Quetzal One to continue teaching to the new generations of the students. Uh, one of the most important things that Quetzal One left to Guatemala was the is the first aerospace laboratory that we have. Uh, this is a laboratory is currently working on other space projects, continue developing technology for CubeSats, and giving the opportunity to all those new generations of students to to work on space projects in Guatemala. The project also contributed to eliminate some legal barriers. Uh, when we started, uh, the national laws didn't consider a procedure to, to request and, and have a frequency to operate lower orbit satellites. Um, with Quetzal One, the Superintendencia of Telecommunications in Guatemala uh, approved a modification in the law in order that the research institutions, institutions can access and use uh, for free a frequency to operate this type of satellites. As I mentioned, one of the objectives of the project uh, was related with SDG5, which is gender equality. Quetzal One helped us to promote balanced gender in engineering with the uh, female members of the team. They really worked hard and became a, a role model for many girls in Guatemala. After Quetzal One, there, there have been several things related to space that have happened in our country that we cannot say that all of them are related to the project, but they came after that. Uh, the National Secretary of Science and Technology in Guatemala works on educational workshops in schools, teaching, uh, young, uh, teaching kids about the Quetzal One. An initiative to create a national secretary of space was proposed in the Congress of Guatemala. Uh, two more universities in Guatemala started projects related with space, and Guatemala became 
a copious member in 2022. So I think that uh, the biggest achievement of this project is to show Guatemala's next generations that uh, everything is possible. Uh, due to the outreach campaign, we work with the cubes that we can reach all Guatemala and see how a lot of kids are um, things are now more interested in, in a space, but also now they believe a project of this uh, type can be done, which was something that was hard to explain at the beginning of the project in 2014. Uh, as an example, I, the year that we sent the satellite into space, the enrollment of mechanical engineering in our university grew more than 100 percent. And that has a uh, keeping that uh, rate uh, the next year. So uh, the project really has a big impact. And now all of these students that are entering are asking questions as when are we going to work the new uh, Quetzal 2? We already started working on that. We have a new generation of students working in our aerospace lab, this uh, new satellite. But it's nice that they are really really clear that this is possible and they will be part of that so everything of this was possible to the kibo cube program we are very thankful with the program with UNUSA and jaxa for this great initiative thank you very much thank you very much victor hugo i think all of these um presentations from the awardees are very inspiring and yeah, we're very happy to say that we're opening a new round today. So I'd like to uh, briefly explain about how you can actually apply to Kibo Cube. So uh, hold on, let me share my screen. Our website is not the easiest website to navigate, so I, I will try to explain it a, a bit more in detail. But also, uh, I'd just like to explain a bit more about the teams that uh, were not present today. So uh, the first round awardee was Kenya. Um, it was mentioned in, by our acting director earlier, but um, it has really led to the acceleration and creation of the Kenya Space Agency, and they have gone on to do more different projects with the initiative itself, but with um, launching their own CubeSats later on as well. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that team as well. Um, last year, we deployed the CubeSat, the first CubeSat of Moldova. Um, this was launched um, in the summer, so we will be hearing more results from this team later on again. And then the next team, whoops, sorry. Um, the the third round awardee, Indonesia, um, was also uh, deployed earlier this year, so we will be hearing results about um, their team as well. So I just want to highlight these three teams that have deployed it, but also we have two more teams that are developing their CubeSats. So with this, I'd like to move on and talk about how you can, oh, sorry, this, sorry, this is about the awardee page. So we have all of the different stories from the awardees on our website. So if you go to the UNUSA website, the Access to Space for All part, and you click on awardees, you can find a whole list, not only of KiboCube, but all the different awardees of our different initiatives. So you can get ideas on what kind of projects they worked on, experience they worked on. So yeah, please have a look at the awardee page as well. And the simplest way to find KiboCube is really just to Google KiboCube, and it would be the one with KiboCube rounds. But just to tell you the long way to go is that you go to the UNUSA website, you click on Access to Space for All, and then you can find the satellite development track. So we have three different tracks under an initiative, and KiboCube is in the satellite development track. You click Satellite Development Track, and then you find KiboCube. And then you can find the KiboCube dedicated page, and then you click on rounds. So you have to scroll down a bit, but um, yeah, the easiest way is just to Google KiboCube. And basically in the KiboCube rounds page, we have all the information there. So our first thing we really want to emphasize is please join the announcement of opportunity webinar we are doing on the 22nd of June. Here we will really talk about the application form in detail, uh, what kind of information we want to see. Um, also, uh, please read all the documents that are listed here very carefully. We know it's long, but it's important. <laughs> That's why it's up there. So we really encourage you to read the documents carefully. And uh, as has have been explained already, we have many webinars under the KiboCube Academy. So please take a look at them. Um, some of them are long, some of them are short, but they are all thematic and very informative. So please have a look. 
And yeah, of course, submit the uh, documents on time. So the, the deadline is the end of this year. And yeah, Kibo Cube Academy, as I uh, has a as has been explained, we cover basically everything, the theoretical knowledge to develop, operate and utilize a small satellite, and it has been in partnership with UNICEF as well. So yeah, please make sure to go to the website. And I just want to emphasize, of course, uh, we're talking about KiboCube today, but under the initiative, we have different programs that have also opened uh, during COPUS. So if you're interested, please have a look. And of course, we will be having more things coming up in the year. And I also want to emphasize, uh, we had that expert meeting earlier this year, and we had presentations from the team from Indonesia as well for KiboCube. So please have a look at uh, our website there and you can get more information. So with this, uh, finally, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Luc Saint-Pierre, who is the chief of the space application section to yeah, make the closing remarks. Briefly, yes, and, and thank you, Asuki. Uh, when she said how you can apply, don't be scared. She didn't mean you, <laughs> but because we count, we count on on your own delegations here to promote and distribute the information to interested parties uh, in your respective countries. Uh, although Elif, I would like to thank the ambassador Ikiara. That 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 shows the commitment of Japan in this collaboration, and I'm very happy. Um, and uh, to Director Kosaka for, for that presentation. I think we, we've we developed uh, over the last few years a trust uh, that is uh, reflected by this agreement being extended up to 2030. And we've been discussing even yesterday new project uh, under Kibo uh, to, to extend these capacity building initiative, uh, not only to more countries, but also to different subject area, different uh, platform for collaboration. Um, I like the, the, your intervention, Minister uh, Glender Rivas, because you quickly described the the uh, environment of Mexico with the oceans, the volcanoes, climate change. Uh, that's the link to the SDGs very clearly. And and when you wonder why, how I can building a small CubeSat is a tool to 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 help reaching the SDGs. That it is. That's what it is. You you open up the minds of students and researchers to applications that are important to your countries, and you try to develop new instruments, new tools. So that, thank you for putting that context. It's very it's very important. Uh, I'm trying to do a wrap up. That's what we have on the program. Yes, uh, fr from the, the 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 presentation of our three uh, guests remotely from uh, Mauritius, Guatemala, and Mexico. There were a couple of very interesting things. The, 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 our friend in Mexico uh, mentioned that the suggestions to participate came from a student. And, and that's, uh, that's important. It means first that our outreach mm -hmm. <laughs> activities work somehow, but that the, the motivation came from uh, one student or a group of students. And that, that's why it's important also in, in terms of uh, promoting STEM education, uh, including for, for young girls. And we saw examples from Guatemala how that, uh, that worked also. Uh, the, the capacity building and we saw demonstration just now with 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 Guatemala. The, the capacity building activity is extremely important for the, the the young researcher and the students, obviously. But the impacts of that capacity building activity to the society in general is, is quite amazing. What will, will it last one year or five years? That impact uh, we, we can hope. But in in primary school, in secondary school, in the in the the, the national press having coverage, uh, those those uh, team or researchers starting to get grants from other agencies and be involved in other projects, the visibility it gave to them uh, is, is fantastic. And we saw that in those three uh, presentation. And if you were with us last Wednesday, yes, you saw something equivalent with the, the drop test and uh, uh, centrifuge uh, facility with SI in the Netherlands. The same thing will happen there. Uh, and, and when I said we hope that these impacts will continue. I'm pretty sure they will, because again, some of these teams are involved in other activities, have higher level of responsibility that came with that visibility. So I'm sure they will continue to, to impact uh, not only students and, and, and research entities, but the government very often in, in taking more interest in those technologies, including for, for sustainable development, because those governments have commitment and 2030 is like the day after tomorrow, no? Uh, so it's important. 
Just to finish, uh, we refer a little bit to uh, training material, webinars, YouTube videos, collaboration with the Kibo Academy in Japan. We were developing collaboration with other space agency to develop and make available more training materials. Uh, we hope to start putting some of that in, in, in other UN languages slowly with, with uh, collaborations. Um, we're, we're developing new collaborations with different partners, not only to access unique facilities, as I said earlier this week, but also to provide more resources because it, it, it's it's not simple, it's complicated. Uh, Mauritius mentioned it, they, they, they dare to take the step to make an application. Uh, that's challenging when you don't have the, 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 the research capacity or the knowledge even in your country. But having more resources, more support, hopefully that we can provide uh, this, this uh, crazy, scary step can be taken by more entities. And, and we'll be uh, trying to work on that to, to support potential interested parties to take that step and then support the awardees also with more material, more resources. We're modifying our approach, how we how we support these entities. Uh, for example, in Kibo Cube, in the next round, we're going to have interviews with, with uh, pre-selected or shortlisted to see exactly what is missing, how can they really be successful. So trying to take people by the hands a little bit more with our, with our partners. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, thank you for JAXA to, to, for inviting us to hopefully have a very nice lunch now and uh, before you go back to your session in very little time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Asuki Wenbin at the back, who's always running around and uh, making sure our uh, participants online can also uh, take advantage of this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luke. So with this, um, we will close the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining, especially um, to our awardees online. Thank you very much for presenting. And to everyone here at the VIC, we have a networking lunch. So um, if, if you can follow the permanent mission of Japan or whoever would lead the way, um, it would be great. And we will have a networking lunch there. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, all of this would be uh, on our website later on. So yeah, thank you. Have a nice day. And please apply to KiboCube. Thank you. Bye.